You don't want no part of that little Mexican boy. What caused the heat between you and Tully Blanchard? Him being a coward? How about that? Being a coward? Yeah, being a coward. Ric Flair. Dick. You. Tully Blanchard. Dick. Brown nose dick. You. Dick. <laughs> Arn Anders. Big brown nose dick. You. Dick. We're off to a roll. We're on a roll, guys. Holy Anderson. Oh, don't bring me Holy Anderson. He's a horse fucking brown nose dick. You. Lex dick. Luger. He's the biggest coward dick. That son of a bitch is a coward. You ran out of the cage. What would you rename the horseman? Yeah, <laughs> I call him the Four Ponies. Arn Anderson, the horseman over there. And I said, well, I don't know what to tell you. He says, well, if you guys are trying to take them belts, you know we can always make some other ones. I went, go fucking make them then. Don't be coming talking shit to me. And that's when Ric Flair got up like and your friend Crockett. I said, dude, I dislike you in the first place. You'll be the first fucking asshole I beat that shit out of. And they asked Ric Flair who he thought of. Ric Flair never got in a fight in his fucking life. How would you know about tough? If you had to go on a 21 day Alaska cruise with Tully Blanchard, what type of excursions would you guys do? You know, in the 80s, you know, 80s, you know, America's cup of tea in the 80s was what? Cocaine. You know? Absolutely. Every, every cup of tea you didn't have. In the 80s, people drank coffee, so people did cocaine. I never did drugs in my life until I ran into Jack and Jerry Briscoe. We went to Denny's to eat after, met up with girls, we were talking, I went to go do, uh, to urinate, you know, or go really do a line. Do a line, <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> urinate and do a line, you know. How could you have served as a Navy SEAL in Vietnam when you graduated high school in the spring of 1973, the last Navy SEAL platoon left Vietnam uh, in 1971? Uh, Operation Enduring Wind was 1975. The evacuation of Vietnam. And that's when we came in and evacuated Laos. This is an army guy talking about Navy guys, that we carry Marines. We taxi Marines, we don't taxi the Army. These clowns fall off of their own helicopters, okay? And I was supposed to go back and wrestle Carlos, and he changed my ticket to come back to Atlanta. Because they knew how close I was to Bodie. They are afraid something was gonna happen. Now, do you know he's hurt? Oh, Jesus. It's obvious he's hurt. I didn't care. It's a funny thing about that, because when he t me and him became world champions, he said, okay, Manny, you're world champion now. Start acting like, start hanging out with the top guys. I looked at him and said, here, have your belt back, fuck you. I'm not doing that. They wanted to put horns on me. I'd have been the first Hellboy. Hellboy wouldn't have been Hellboy, it would have been me. WWF, you told yeah, about. Yeah, WWF. They wanted to put horns and make you literally a raging bull. bull. Yeah, and I told them that, fuck off. I ain't doing that shit. Me and Ruby became very close. We were like brothers after we got together. And you know, he came to me, he was green. And the greatest thing, I'll say this about Rick Ruby, the dad died, he listened. He listened, man. And when I jump his butt and say, man, nah, Tim, you can't do this. You're hurting people. He listened. He didn't argue. He didn't say, I know what I'm doing. I man, listen. He listened. Rude was great. He was he just smoked dope. And he would smoke dope. He got Chinese eyes. So I'd, <laughs> he got real Chinese eyes. I'd go in there. Nee, 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 nee. <laughs> Everybody was pretty close. You know, we all wrote. Bobby Jaggers came in. And I think the only problem we ever had in the territory was an idiot called Bobby Fulton. They come into the territory thinking because he was a small guy that all the big guys were out of the business. That's about the time I slapped him around in old Texas. Told him to shut the hell up and get on my dress. You know, he's, always, he's an idiot. I took a crap in the hat and Paul Jones comes on the plane the next day. If I find out who shit in my hat, I'm gonna kick their ass. Brad Armstrong jumps up and goes, Manny Fernandez did it. And I wanna see you kick his ass. <laughs> you look like one of them prissy guys that. that somebody wants to get a hold of and beat the hell out of. Thank you, now I'm being compared to Jim Cornette. There you go, except you little a little smarter. We had a club, me, Chavo Guerrero, and Tiger Conway Jr. Thumping, called the Raw Order of the Chicken. And we'd always greet each other like this. Fuck! I trained Tom Pritchard, number one. I trained with Chavo Guerrero and Tiger Conway Jr. He's in our bloodline. We trained him, beat him up, trained him. We even they made him uh, get his first rat, bang his first rat, because he didn't want to do it. We got her naked, stripped her down, made him get on top and bang the hell out of her, man. <laughs> we put it in everything. We made him, we were busted. <laughs> Manny, when you walked into a bar, were the other boys like who were there already, like maybe they got there first, and like you're coming in, you're doing the chicken yell, like is there like a general like, oh my God, they're here. Oh, definitely. Like, David Crockett sucked, can't stand him. I took a shit in his bag. Magnum, and yeah, no, he's all right. I mean, he, did, Karma, did, Karma got Magnum, so you know, that's, I'd say he's all right. I wouldn't call him a dick. See, I'm very ticklish. And the Japanese go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Because they freak out when Americans do something weird, like jump up in the air. Right, they're very reserved. They yeah, don't like the yeah, goosing, yeah. the, uh, the chicken. <laughs> the they chicken. probably hate that shit. <laughs> when you're starting that shit, they're oh, ready the to throw you the, the chicken, fuck out. The raw order, everybody hated that. Unbearable. Mm -hmm. There must have been nights where you guys were unbearable. 
Oh, totally, every night. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> That's the bottom line. I will. You know, I ain't, I ain't worried about that. I got PTSD.